welcome to my video. I'll be talking about my experience at Lollapalooza 2022. So I've been to many, many, many concerts, but this is actually my first ever festival. So I watched a lot of videos on YouTube in order to prepare. So now having my own experience, I wanted to make my own video talking about everything that I learned, plenty of advice, tips, and tricks. And so for Lollapalooza, I went the last two days, Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, I did the pretty normal festival experience. And then on Sunday, I actually camped out for J-Hope. So I'll be talking about both my experiences, everything in general about Lollapalooza, and then also about camping out at a stage. So yeah, let's get into the video. For part one of this video, I'm gonna be talking about what to pack, what to wear, security, safety, the park layout, merch, and bathrooms. And for part two, I'll be talking about how to get to the front, what time to line up, water, food, bathrooms, and my overall experience. Also, I'll be including plenty of pictures and videos throughout the video. Okay, first thing about what to pack and the bag situation. So to what to pack, I would bring portable chargers and collapsible water bottles, sunscreen, small snacks that won't melt, and Tylenol or ibuprofen. And for the bags, I would recommend a fanny pack. That's what I saw most people have there. And that's what I had. Um, fanny pack, it's a good small size that so keeps you from bringing too many things that you don't need. Um, so yeah, fanny pack, definitely the most recommended. Another thing that a lot of people would have is a hydration pack, so just like a little backpack with water in it. Um, those are definitely good if you're staying there for a long time during the day, but I would be a little bit cautious about storing things in your backpack because I know theft is a big problem at Lollapalooza, so having something on your back, things can get easier stolen. Um, but I did see many people have those there. The next thing is a clear bag. I would recommend if you're going with a group of people, at least one person in your group to have a clear bag. We were really thankful that we had one um, because we would put all of our chargers in it. We put snacks in our bag and when we bought merch, we had somewhere to put our merch in the bag instead of just holding on to it all day long. So yeah, that's what I would recommend with what to pack. Okay, so for what to wear, I saw everything from rave wear to just casual shorts and t-shirt. So really anything goes. The most important thing is something that you don't mind getting dirty. Also, shoes comfort over everything. You're gonna be doing so much walking, you wanna have the most comfortable shoes as possible. Also, shoes that you don't mind getting dirty because they definitely will. Some of the stages are just sand, so your shoes will get really sandy. And by day three and four, some of the stages are just like dirt and mud. So wear shoes that you don't mind getting dirty. Also, don't wear sandals, again, because they'll get dirty and people are really likely to step on your feet. So yeah, don't wear sandals. Okay, so about security. Security was actually a lot more lax than I expected, which was kind of good because we were able to sneak in a few things and the bag policy, they didn't really pay too much attention to what they have online. But also, of course, I wish the security was a little bit more strict. Um, but yeah, the lines definitely get longest towards the evening around 5 p.m. We got there on Saturday about 2 p.m. and security, like we, it took us like five minutes to get through. Um, so they don't really dig through the bags or like anything that you have. They mostly just kind of open it, peek through. So you can definitely bring in like food that you aren't supposed to have. Um, just bring something small. If you have like mini bags within your bigger bag, they won't like unzip them. Like they don't really go digging through your bag at all. Um, so yeah, kind of a good thing. Also kind of a bad thing. All right, so I have three tips for safety. The first thing is when you're registering your bands, there is a spot where you can add emergency contact information. So definitely do that. The next thing is beforehand, come up with a plan with your group for a meeting location in case you get lost because cell service doesn't always work, especially towards the end of the day. It really isn't working very fast at all. So you might not be able to text or call your friends. So come up with a spot outside of the park as well as spots inside the park to meet up with if you get lost. Also, the park is so big. So if you know you're gonna be spending time on just the right side of the park, come up with a location near you. So me and my group were kind of adjusting our meeting location every time we were going towards a different end of the park. Another thing that I recommend for safety is taking screenshots of the park map and your hotel information or really anything that you might not be able to search up towards the end of the day whenever the cell service isn't working that well so that you have everything just saved in your phone. About security, they, whenever I was there, they weren't doing pat downs, but I did see one of the lines were being more thorough and the security guard there was making you kind of pat down yourself, like moving your hands around your clothes, but not all the lines were doing that. So it kind of just depends which line you end up going through. Next thing about the park layout. So the park is one mile long and there's a water fountain right in the middle. So half a mile to the left of the water fountain, half a mile to the right of the water fountain. 
there are three entrances, two in the main entrance right in the center of the park, and then one on the very opposite left side of the park. And then down the middle, like splitting off from the water fountain, um, there's one main street. That's where all of the food and drinks will be. There's also plenty of hydration stations all around the park that you can fill up your hydration packs or your water bottles with. All right, now for merch. So there was two different merch booths. One is the artist merch booth with plenty and plenty of lines. So that didn't take long at all. So every artist that is there in the four days will have their merch there. And then there's also the Lollapalooza store. So that's where they just have like general Lollapalooza merch. Um, and the line for that one was definitely a lot longer, but a little tip is whenever you're registering your wristband, there's an option to do PayPal or Venmo. So you can just like pay with your wristband when you're there. Do that because you will get a fast line. So once you get to the tent, there's just one line. And whenever we got there, there was not a single person in the PayPal or Venmo line. So we just walked right in. Also on your first purchase at Lollapalooza, you will get $10 off for registering your band with PayPal or Venmo. Right, and for bathrooms. So the bathrooms actually were better than we expected. They're just porta potties, but, but they weren't that bad. Um, two things is to bring Kleenexes because sometimes the porta potties will run out of toilet paper. Also, they do have hand sanitizer stations right by the porta potties, um, but sometimes they run out. So bring your own Kleenexes and hand sanitizer. My overall experience on Saturday was really, really good. One thing I did learn the hard way is to pay attention to what artists are playing before the one that you want to wait for. So we were waiting for TXT on Saturday and all of the artists that were going on before them were DJs like EDM music, which is cool, but it just wasn't our kind of thing. Um, so we like should have paid attention beforehand whenever before we decided to like try to stay there and get to the front. Um, it was just a really aggressive, rowdy crowd, mosh pits, all that. Just not the vibe that we were wanting for our K-pop group, TXT. Um, so yeah, that was something just to pay attention to. Look up the artist beforehand, and sometimes like the music isn't always similar to what you're waiting for at the same stage. All right, let's get into part two of this video where I'll be talking about my whole experience camping out all day long for J-Hope. My friends and I were very, very happy with where we ended up being. We were about seven people from the barricade and we were basically center stage. It definitely took a lot of patience and endurance, but I'll be sharing all of my tips and tricks for surviving the day and getting as close as possible. Okay, to start, I'm gonna be talking about what time to line up and how best to get to the front. So I know lots of people have different opinions about what time to get there and how lining up works and all of that. I'm just gonna be sharing my experience. So my friends and I got there around 9 a.m. Lines can't officially start until 10 a.m. and Lollapalooza was really trying to discourage people from lining up early. Of course, that still happened. Um, there was plenty of people lining up all night long and we were checking social media to see that. And the busiest was the busiest entrance was entrance closest to J-Hope. And we realized that there were so many people there that we ended up going to a farther away entrance, but we knew that everyone at the closest entrance was gonna take so long to get through security. So we ended up going to a different one. So what we did was just kind of hover around the area until 10 a.m. hits. We knew that it was just gonna be a free-for-all because Lollapalooza can't honor any lines happening before 10 a.m. So we knew the lines that were just kind of forming didn't really mean anything and that the Lollapalooza people did not care that you were lining up early. So once 10 a.m. hit, there was already kind of like a crowd of people waiting by the entrance. And then once 10 a.m. hit, we were able to get into the official lines. Okay, so tips and tricks from us. So I had a group of five people so what we did was my three friends who felt confident in running from the entrance to the stage, they gave their bags to me and my mom. So we had all the bags for ourselves. So our friends could go through the no bag lines, which we knew would go by so much quicker. And my mom and I would deal with getting all of our bags checked. That was definitely a big help. Another thing, just like a general rule, anytime you're going somewhere in lines, always go to the left or the right. My mom and I know this. And so whenever we got through, like after you scan your wristband, you go through the security lines and everyone just went towards the front. But my mom and I went all the way to the very left line and we ended up jumping up way ahead in front of other people just because people didn't spread out. Another tip is the day before, scope out the entrance that you think you're gonna be going to and scope out the path from the entrance to that stage and the stage area. So we did this on Saturday. We 
Yeah, yeah, we're all just food and drinks and the path from the entrance. We knew that whole entire area around J-Hope stage. And we also had ideas of exactly where we wanted to go once we entered in that park because we knew everyone was just gonna be running towards the best spot. So we already had a plan in mind. Once we were lined up at 10 a.m., that's when the official lines can start happening. Around 10.40, they led us through the first thing where you scan your wristbands and then you wait at the security lines until right at 11 o'clock open the security lines and you go through and then it is again just another free-for-all everybody starts running to the stage okay so now i'll be talking about water food and bathrooms so this is something i'm sure doesn't always happen with every single headliner it kind of depends but there were so many fans army waiting for j-hope um, and of course i doubted how many of us that there would be so we thought that once we got to our spot that we'd be able to go to the bathroom go get drinks and water at least at the beginning of the day that didn't happen. Right when we got there at 11 o'clock and we got to the stage, there was already hundreds of people coming in behind us and we knew that there was no way we were gonna be out of that crowd. So we prepared bringing small snacks in our bags with us and also they were handing out water to us. Again, I don't know if that always happens or if it was just because there were so many of us waiting there at the very beginning of the day that they were handing out small cartons of water and then towards the, uh, till a little bit later, um, full bottles of water too. So we were good on water, uh, but I know that might not always happen. And for food, so there was no chance of us leaving that crowd to go get actual food. So we really just survived on gum and candy and mints but they were really, they were lifesavers. So the gum was just so nice because you're so thirsty and hungry that you know you don't wanna drink too much water because you can't go out to go to the bathroom. So just having a little bit of candy or gum was such a good thing. And we were handing them out to everyone around us. Another important thing is to make friends because you are gonna be spending so much time with these people. So make friends everyone with everyone around you. Okay, something else I wanted to talk about that I didn't really expect was your body kind of goes into a different mode. So me and my whole group experienced this. So normally in a regular day, you get hungry around noon and we have to go to the bathroom, you just go to the bathroom. But it was not like that because we knew that there was no chance of us getting out. Most of us like weren't hungry throughout the day. Um, I went the whole entire day with only having gum and candy and like I didn't even feel that hungry at the end of the night. And we knew that we couldn't drink that much water so we didn't feel like that thirsty throughout the day. So it really is just something you don't expect until you're experiencing it. Also, if you're waiting all day for a stage, the artist in between will make such a big difference. So the first one we saw that day was Erica Banks and we had already been sitting there for three hours before the first artist came on stage. So that first three hours was definitely the hardest part of the day. Once artists started coming out and doing their sets, it made the time go by so much faster and it really gave you that energy that you didn't have. Something I wanted to share about like the pit layout. So there's a left and the right side with a like walkway in between that's really just meant for security. I know the Kid Leroy did like jump off the stage and like go through that little walkway, um, but I don't think artists like usually do that. He was the only one that did. Um, but so the left side is where I would recommend going to, especially if you're trying to get closer and towards the center of the stage um, because the left side goes more all the way towards the middle, like towards the center of the stage, and the right side is really only the right edge of the stage. I'll put the picture up here so it'll make more sense. Um, also on the right side, at the very front, in between like the barricade and then the stage, there's a whole section for, I think it's VIP people. Um, so even if you get to the closest that you can, if you're just like re regular like GA, you're still pretty far back because there's a whole gap of people meant for GA. So yeah, definitely like plan ahead of time where you want to go towards. Okay, and the thing is, I know everyone wants to be by the barricade so that they can see their artists better, but honestly, being as close as possible is really good for like safety reasons too, because if you do start to not feel good and you feel like you need to be pulled out of the crowd, the closer you are to a barricade, the easier that it is for you to actually get like pulled out over the barricade so you can leave if you start not doing good. Um, also, if you need like water, you're like closer to like the security people that can help you get water. But if you're too far back in the middle, like you really do just feel like lost in a sea of people and and you feel like there's no way out. So it really is good to be as close as a barricade as you can. Something else I've just learned from going to a lot of concerts, if you are like towards the front or if you're on the barricade, you really do have to stay strong and just hold your ground because people will try to push and people will try to take your spot. 
it's something that just happens and it's better if you have experience in crowds like this or being at barricade um, you really just have to like do your best not let anyone get your spot because if someone can take your spot it's theirs like you have to do your best to hold your ground Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about is how I prepared for Lollapalooza. So this is just my experience. I know I can get dehydrated pretty easily and I was just really worried about making it through the whole day. So two weeks before Lollapalooza, I started drinking a lot of water and Gatorade. I only had water and Gatorade for two weeks leading up to it. And then I also started going on like morning runs or jogs, just a little bit of exercise every day because I wanted to like gain that endurance, um, just a little bit of conditioning before La Plaza, and I would just like run outside in the heat to just get my body more ready for that. You definitely don't have to, it's just what I did. And so I definitely think it helped when I was there, I felt more ready to survive the whole day long. All right, so now I'm at the end of everything I wanted to share. I wanted to say that this definitely was worth it camping out for J-Hope, but I would really only do this for like my favorite artists. I would only do this for BTS. I don't think I would do it for anyone else because it was mentally and physically exhausting and just so draining. My body did really go through a lot, but I did have a good time in some way. Once J-Hope was out, everything was worth it. Um, I don't know if I would do it again unless it was a BTS member. So just know your body um, and know yourself if you think you're able to handle camping out for a long day because it really is a lot to endure. All right, that is all that I have. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. I know this is something that I wish I would have had before going to Lollapalooza. If you have any questions about anything at all, I will definitely be ready to answer and talk about my experience more. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And that's it. Thanks for watching.